production funding is brought to you in part by A. Reddix and Associates, a healthcare management consulting firm bridging the gap between healthcare policy and the community through education, training, and outreach. Find out more at ARDX.net. Discussing the issues and celebrating the successes of the African American community. This is Another View. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Another View. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. The theme of tonight's roundtable is money, from the alarming disparity of wealth between blacks and whites, to the cost to celebrate African American heritage, to who pays for national and local political shenanigans. Our pundits have opinions that they are very happy to share. Please welcome Roger Chesley, columnist with the Virginian Pilot, Dr. Carol Pretlow, Associate Professor of Political Science at Norfolk State University, community activist Bill Thomas, and Will Levise, Director of Community Outreach and Development with the Urban League of Hampton Roads. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome How back. You Hope you're having a great you? summer. Good summer yeah. so far. Absolutely. Wealth. Study done by Brandeis University in Massachusetts very recently says that the typical white family is now five times richer than its African-American uh, counterpart in the same class. White family assets, uh, $100,000 up from 22000 in the mid-80s. Black family assets uh, up 5000 from 2000 in the mid-80s. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Opinions. Roger, let me start with you. Well, I, I think one of the problems that you see, uh, a combination of are you having your children getting into college, that's usually one of the pathways to getting wealth. It costs so much to get into college uh, nowadays. Uh, I know for myself, I was able to pay my own way through, but that was quite a few years ago, a few decades ago. <laughs> you each paid a share how long ago? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can't necessarily do that at some of the better institutions now. So already you're starting with uh, problems, at least getting your own self to the point where you're helping to create wealth for the family, mm -hmm. trying to get your children to be able to do the same thing. And then any debts that might be piling up, any lack of access to capital that your family might have in terms of credit or poor credit, all of those things hurt in the long run. Um, and then uh, looking at some of the studies that, uh, you know, had a chance to just glance at before today's show, you see uh, the disparities in uh, credit that people credit have had and, and in who, terms of buying houses, right. the right. types of loans, <coughs> the, the bad loans that have gone out, and we always seem to be catching a lot of the, uh, the effects of that. Bill, how much of this is institutional? How much is it is our own fault? Ninety-nine percent is our own fault. We wear our assets, we drive our assets, we have our hair fixed with our assets on, with jewelry. We don't save, and I, we're the generation, I know your mom and dad and the rest of us, we had piggy banks. Mm -hmm. I'm an economist, we do not save anything. And then we buy disposable assets, cars that are gonna depreciate. We get in new houses and we, then we tear them up. And then sometimes we even burn them down, which mm -hmm. creates a d diminished value we don't own any institutional assets in Hampton Roads. No car dealerships, no banks, one small savings and loan. Mm. Uh, we don't own our own institutions where we can educate our own kids. We don't even own our own hospitals. So we own nothing and consume everything. We buy what we want and beg for what we need. Mm -hmm. And as long as we continue to have that mentality, we will never ever have anything. But what about, Carol, there, there are a lot of people who reach middle class status who I believe start to recognize um, that, <clears throat> excuse me, that you do need to pass something down to, uh, to the rest of the family. But a lot of times within the African American family too, you wind up helping Cousin Joe and Uncle Tom and uh, Uncle Tom. But, anyway, yeah. but, you, but you know what yeah, I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying, that we are an expanded family so that distant cousins and 12 cousins twice removed, we end up helping. The other side of it, and I'd like to piggyback on what you said about education, is that education cost a lot. And even uh, up until fairly recently, if students had student loans, if you think about it, by the time they graduate, even if they uh, just are undergraduates, 
the the cost um, the interest rates on those are so high that they come in the workforce with a deficit and so all of that but will everybody I mean white kids get student loans too absolutely absolutely and I think that I think what we're missing here is that there this issue has to be looked at looked at in context I would be surprised if you gave me a stat that said there wasn't a black white uh, a wealth gap why would I be surprised? Because yeah. if you look at it in context, African Americans and Native Americans are two groups in this country that systematically have been historically locked out of the system. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that in, in its proper context, what are the three ways in which people obtain wealth? Inheritance, business ownership, home ownership. If you can, if you've got systematically being locked out of home ownership, which that could be documented, that is proof, that is true. If you've got systematically not being able to obtain business loans, if you've got systematically, if you don't obtain those two things I mentioned, who are you going to pass down wealth to? So you have to look at it in, in context. Now, mm -hmm. after looking at it in context, I would say that now there's an education component and there's a responsibility once you've achieved this knowledge, once you've achieved college education, once you've achieved business, to be able to handle your money in a, in a way that is, is good stewardship. But you have to look at this in context. Mm -hmm. There are no other groups that no, the, the context is that we're not good stewards. We don't buy life insurance. We don't. We don't save our money. We consume everything. And, and the, the biggest problem with education, anybody who wants to get educated in America can get educated. Just as an example, there were two uh, immigrants from Suffolk who graduated first in their class. They came here four years ago and they graduated. So you can do that. Yeah, that was in the pilot. Wasn't that was it? in the pilot. Yeah, thank you. And they didn't even speak the language. <laughs> no, it was in the pilot, and that's good. But we, we don't do it. We don't own any institutional assets. The worst thing that ever happened to black people in the United States of America oh, was integration. It was integration. There was a wealth and, gap and during, no, during the pre-segregation okay. era. Okay. No, there was because, a wealth gap. Hold on, hold on. Because There's always the economic, been a wealth the gap. The economic value of, of black folks in America, especially in Hampton Roads, and Tom Sheen at your paper is mm -hmm. an expert at this, mm -hmm. the economic drain, the sucking horn of all our economic value was sucked out of our communities and went into other communities. When, our dollars, our dollars turn in our community one time in 24 hours. In the Jewish community, it never turns. Mm -hmm. It stays there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so those are the values and the money and the things that you can create that can sustain a society. And the other things are given to everybody. Uh, I don't want to get into a big debate about integration, segregation. I mean, I'm glad we're not getting lynched in the numbers that we were before. <laughs> we are getting I lynched. Think there's well, some, we are getting lynched. Yeah, well, we that's got lynched a, out in Virginia Beach yesterday yeah, the other weekend. What, what, I, what I will say, though, is there are savings. There are black folks who save. There are black folks who are owners. Are we doing it as much as we did perhaps pre-integration? No. But there are people who are doing that. You have your Magic Johnsons. You have other people who are doing things in terms of trying to start businesses, mm -hmm. trying to uh, maintain and grow businesses. But as we all know, a lot of small businesses do fail. So, uh, you know, we can't negate the fact that, that segregation, that discrimination, that problems with housing loans, uh, things of that nature, that plays a part too. Yes, some of it is our own lifestyles, but some of it is also what is the access to money that's, that's allowed to people who look Carol, like Carol, what us. happens though if we don't bring, bridge this gap? Because if it keeps continuing along this line, we're really going to be in trouble. I think we will, and I think that what will happen is our communities will progressively fail and the disintegration of those communities, and I hate to agree with you. The truth will set you free. Don't do it. The truth will set you free. Part of it, even if you're a part of it. No, 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 because that's the truth. Um, because I come from a small town, and I saw what happened in integration. Thank you. A lot of the smaller businesses, the smaller grocery stores, the smaller mm -hmm. gas stations, the f went under, and that's because uh, of the absorption into the larger stream, and even teachers were unemployed as a result of the integration. Some of the values that we were teaching in churches and schools and in our communities themselves got 
somehow dispersed. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we are in a position that we can regroup, but we're going to have to make a big effort to but do again, that. Again, let's look at it in context. context. And during that time, <laughs> during that time, there was a wealth gap mm -hmm. during that time. Oh, yeah. So don't within be the black shocked. Community, within so the black be, community. That's right. And, and so don't be shocked. And again, I'm not, I'm not in disagreement with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm just helping the audience to be able to see things in its context. There was a wealth gap then. Well, there was a wealth gap now. The issue now is what are the solutions and now that there have been agree. legal barriers removed? How do we now move forward? And one of the things the Urban League has is an upcoming housing Program. forum on teaching people how to, how, to buy houses. how to buy houses and not be caught into these negative loans that suck your and wealth away. And teaching people about credit. So, mm -hmm. Exactly. So we have to start looking at how do you move forward, not not reminisce about some time as if it was so much greater but let me, than let me before. Give, let me give you a simple see it in this proper let me give you a simple rule. Ahead, if you already have a dollar, don't buy something that costs you a dollar forty-seven. How about that rule? Oh, we agree with that. How about that rule? But we, but we didn't all start off with a dollar. Some of us started off with a penny, that's a, that's and other that's, 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 that's an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some that, people that start, start off on money. money. That's that's money. money. That's that's time. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. time. One at a time. The Japanese they locked up in internment. They used to make stuff that you would throw away when you got a little Japanese project. Now they are one of the most wealthiest communities in the world. The Filipinos. The, the Asians, the Mexicans. I just came down from, from Washington and I'm seeing Mexicans building buildings. And, and I'm just saying all these things you're talking about are excuses. You, not, we got to stand up and do what we need to do. Well, Bill, even, even, in, the, even in the study, it did say that the powerful <laughs> role of persistent discrimination in housing credit and labor markets plays towards this disparity. I mean, are you I don't believe saying that. that that doesn't exist? I don't believe that. Because even in your paper, you wrote maybe last uh, December, the wealthiest, the 25 wealthiest communities in Hampton Roads by zip codes. Mm -hmm. And if you go look at that chart again, you'll see that five zip codes with majority uh, African Americans are in that list. Mm -hmm. So it ain't all that bad. Excuse You're the saying, language. Don't, don't, let some, don't let good evidence get in the way of a good argument. No, argue. don't, don't let excuses saying. get in. Some, some don't of, let, for example, you mentioned Filipinos. Mm -hmm. Some of the Filipinos are some of the best and brightest that came over here. Mm -hmm. Some of the Asian Americans that came over I'm here in the bright. 50s were among the best and brightest. Excuse. That's comparing apples to oranges no, when not. you talk about people coming over, excuse. going through a slave experience or going oh, through an Lord. experience of no being on, or being on, on, um, on reservations. Oh, I, I, talk, I, I this, do this, wonder this, one of the things, I mean, so where would you go Bill to, to make it better? I mean, right. you, you're yeah, quick to criticize, but I don't see quick to suggest a way out of this. And, and to me, yes, education is important. Getting insurance is important. Um, so when you criticize people who look like us, where do you want us to go exactly? I want you to and go to work. I want you to go to work. I want but, you to go to school. But we work. I want you to go to and, and we would agree with that. That's so. not true. That's not true. Fifty percent of us don't even no, go to high school. No, we we wouldn't agree with you up here that that these are some good things to do. No, you're just going to wallow in your problem, your misery for the rest of your life, and we're going to be a failed community and a failed people. You just want a column out of this, and I'll, I'll write one about you. Okay. Let's move on to the next topic because we don't have a whole lot of time. Afram Fest was held the weekend of May 21st through 23rd, away from Memorial Day weekend. Attendance way down. Yeah. And now the police and sheriffs of Norfolk have sued um, the festival for pay. What's going on with Afram Fest? Are we about to lose it? May I ask well, just no, go ahead, Carol. One question. Do people sign contracts before they agree to perform services? Because if you sign a contract, mm -hmm. then you know by the terms of the contract what is required. And you, it's not fair afterwards to say, oh, no, we're not abide by the contract. So was there a contract or some kind of agreement? My understanding agreement? is they had an agreement, but well, go ahead. I, I think that, you know, I don't, I don't know the details about the contract, but I think that the event itself could very well be in trouble because the country is changing. <laughs> times, times are changing. And, you know, with all of the movement of the time of that event and, and with the... So do, the, you, do you think that, that people aren't interested in that type of, of uh, festival? Oh, I, I think that they may have an issue with people being interested. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. They missed their market niche. They have these hip-hop people, even a white guy up there trying to do some rapping. 
because I went there. The, and you have the hip hop younger kids in there with all this crazy music that nobody understands. It has lost its focus. It's it's lost its 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 value. You can't niche a marketplace anymore to the extent that they did that in such a huge venue. You have to be universal, diverse in the attractions. Nobody wants to hear some white guy from a radio station rapping and singing around up there with a big dyed so hair So is it more so the, the change in terms of the audience they're trying yes. to attract? I, in my opinion. Or, or the judgment. whole idea of celebrating um, African American heritage? I, I think there's some question about is it being organized properly? Is it on the, it's, it's not going to get the weekend that used to have on Memorial Day, so is it going to be able to attract enough people anymore? Is, because it is, used to attract a bunch of people from out of town. Yes, right. exactly. Too. And, and, and I think a, a, a point to that is the Hampton Jazz Festival recently came by and I, was, and I wrote about it and was talking to them about that. And they had a year, they had some years where they mm -hmm. had some trouble. Mm -hmm. The acts that they were bringing in wasn't what people wanted, so forth and mm -hmm. so on. And they had to readjust and be able to start listening to, to their audience and refine what they were doing. And now they are very much having a success with that event. Afram, I think, needs to look at that same type of approach. What, what are they, mm -hmm. you know, how have times changed and have they kept up and adjusted to it? And whether they need to refocus And also show. whether they can ultimately And they need afford. to market it better yeah. because, um, in Norfolk State, a lot of people didn't even know that it had shifted weekends. Mm -hmm. And so there needs to be a, a better marketing, better organization, better community involvement in the whole idea, and hopefully to stick to a weekend that you have marked that you can, it. Yeah, yeah that you can identify. On. Let's talk about Mayor Holly, because next Tuesday mm -hmm. is the recall election. Mm -hmm. um, we've only got about four minutes left in the discussion. So should he stay? Should he go, Bill? I think he should stay, and uh, and I take this on the premise that I think the process that they have gendered up here is not a fair process, and that's politics. But the man mm -hmm. has served 35 years, and he served the city, and they're not treating him with any kind of dignity, and this is the kind of thing that happens. It's not a racial thing. It's a power thing. They're going to snatch the power away from him, and they're going to destroy his legacy. And if we ask, mm -hmm. quote, African Americans mm -hmm. want to sit there and let that happen and don't go out and vote because we're too lazy to go out and vote, Stop saying only lazy. five percent of us voted last election well, in the city election. Well, are you saying that if you're black that you should vote for him because he's black, or should you not vote for him because he's not doing the job that he should be doing? And also, this is a legal process. There are uh, there are only a handful of cities and counties in the state that allow this. But Portsmouth is one of them. What he he is going to be the first mayor oh, in go. the country recalled twice. Yeah, that's that's a, a heck of, of uh, a statement that's going to be so in the first he, line of your obituary. So you think he won't be? I, I don't really? see how he can win. He, th th you have 8,000 people that signed the petition uh, to put the vote, put the recall election before us. It'll probably be a low turnout. I'm trying to figure out where he's going to get the votes mm -hmm. to win this. Mm -hmm. Carol? I was wondering about his base. I'm not from Portsmouth, and I'm sorry I don't keep up a mm -hmm. lot with it, but I think if his base really works and go and divides the community up into the varying precincts, there is a possibility that he could win. But it disturbs me that the issue under which he is being, because it just seems like petty frankly. I mean, there the, are the, people... The questions that were brought up about his improprieties right, mm -hmm. in terms of his uh, and clerical I'm, health. I'm not defending those, but mm -hmm. everybody has had some employers or in, been in some situation where they said, oh my God, I wish that person wouldn't do this. That's a personal issue. Mm -hmm. The legal issue is, was he effective? Was he accomplishing the objectives that the city had? And what were his, what things... Uh, economically and politically, did he bring to the community? And those should be. Let me, let me get Will in okay. here real quick. I'm surprised to hear Bill suggesting that you should vote for him because he's black and not. I didn't say he, he was black. Not because not, he's an no. American. I'm saying to vote for him because he brought <laughs> MERS surprised. shipping to to. But, uh, but I would agree. Me. But I would agree. And that's with the that. largest mm -hmm. business that's been involved in Hampton Roads in the past decade. Okay, good. MERS shipping. Okay. Good. That's good. But, but I would agree with downtown. them that his legacy is very important. A lot of times what gets missed here is that he's the first 
black mayor in this area. He represents a generation, people working hard, achieving, and what can happen. And then for him to go out in this manner, uh, being forced bad. out, is not only di is on a on a community I, level, I, that's I, is disrespectful. I people blame some of the people that. closest to him. Anybody who goes to council meetings and goes to work sessions know that he is no longer effective and know they should have been talking to him two years ago when the election came up and said, please anoint somebody to replace you, to follow in your exactly. legacy. And that was not done. And I think that that's, that's uh, just terrible that it's mm -hmm. playing out this way. Wow. This and could have been avoided. And he's 83 now, too. And I think to Roger's point, probably ego, again, with politicians, oh, well, with people who are driven ego, ego, probably prevented him <laughs> from <laughs> being able to yeah. see yeah. that himself. He, his term lasted, what is it, to 2002, 2012? Last yeah, he's got two Robert more years. Yeah. Senator point. Robert Byrd is 109 years old. He <laughs> died in his seat. And he nor Strom Thurmond should have been in as long as they were. Okay, and you know what? And on that note, I hate to have age discrimination. I hate to stop it here, but we are out of time. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll have you back in in the fall, and we'll talk about some more topics. And when we come back, the history of the first and only secondary school for African Americans in Virginia Beach. But first, here's what's happening in Hampton Roads. It's taken a few years, but the museum dedicated to preserving the history of Virginia Beach's first and only secondary school for African Americans is open and welcoming visitors. As our Lisa Godley reports, the Princess Anne County Training School and Union Kempsville High School Museum gives hundreds of alumni and interested visitors an up-close look at the place that shaped the lives of so many for more than 30 years. It's been 40 years since Edna Hendricks hurried down the hallways of her all-black high school determined to get to class on time. But for Hendricks and close to a thousand others, the lessons learned and memories made behind these walls have not been forgotten. We're seeing Mrs. Goodman in front of her blackboard reciting Macbeth because she put so much force and emphasis into it. For Bertha Smith Furby, it was the day she learned she was exempt from taking a final exam in Mr. Watson's government class. That was a memory that I would never forget, mainly because I had not studied, but I loved his class. It was a big surprise that morning because there were three students that were exempted. And when he called my name, I was the last name to call. It was while she was a student at Princess Anne County Training School that Bertha met her future husband, Willie Furby. That's Eliza Jones and Bruce Schofield. Yeah, that's a beautiful picture there. Furby, who played tailback for the school's football team, says he'll never forget the day he was recognized during an assembly for his contributions to the team. Will you please come to stand to receive? You must wave a player trophy and tears just went you know what I mean? They were most of my, you know, and they were my joy in my life during that time. These are just a few of the thousands of precious memories sparked by the opening of the Princess Anne County Training School and Union Kempsville High School Museum. This beautiful facility is a wonderful tribute to the teachers, students, and accomplishments made during a time when things were separate but by no means equal. Still, the faculty, supported by dedicated parents, made sure the students who were educated here were ready to succeed when they left. We had a teacher, Mr. Watson, and used to call him Big Boy. Everybody looked up to him because he always said, better, better, you can do better, you can do better. And he was also instrumental in helping us go to college. Mr. Watson, John Perry, all of them would take loads of children to other colleges, you know, when you get ready to graduate, and show them the way to 
what the schools had to offer. Here at the museum, you can see everything from teachers' quotes to Letterman's sweaters. There's even a scaled-down version of the school's auditorium. One of my favorite displays here at the museum is the yearbooks wall. By just touching the screen, you can view any yearbook from 1945 to 1969. All you have to do is pick a book and turn the page. I was just so impressed. This museum has done so much for my heart. I, I just cannot believe what I'm seeing. But this is more than a place for the alumni to reflect. Nestled in the foyer of the Beach's new Renaissance Academy, the museum gives younger visitors an up-close look at what can be accomplished with set goals, great role models, and a determination to succeed. For another view, I'm Lisa Godley. And that's our program for this week. Be sure to visit our website, anotherview.tv, and sign up for our eView newsletter. And you can find us on Facebook, and we'd love it if you would become a fan. Next week, we'll spend some time with two great jazz musicians, Lonnie Liston-Smith and our very own Jay Sennett. We'll see you next time for Another View. Production funding is brought to you in part by A. Reddix & Associates, a healthcare management consulting firm bridging the gap between healthcare policy and the community through education, training, and outreach. Find out more at ardx.net.